Welcome to the approach to nuclear medicine. The link to this presentation is at the bottom. The main objective today is to develop a conceptual framework for nuclear medicine that you can build upon and add knowledge to during your rotations. Here are the rest of the objectives. In traditional diagnostic radiology, images primarily display anatomy. For CT and radiograph, we shine a light bulb of sorts, which emits photons through a patient and onto a detector. The detector receives those photons and gives us anatomical information. Nuclear medicine is different for two main reasons. Firstly, nuclear medicine images primarily display physiology. We make this happen not by shining a light bulb onto the patient, but instead we turn the patient into a light bulb. We do this by injecting a radiopharmaceutical, which localizes to the targeted physiology and then emits photons directly from the patient. First, let's look at what a radiopharmaceutical is. All radiopharmaceuticals are comprised of two basic components, a radioisotope and a biologically active molecule. The radioisotope is a radioactive element. The biologically active molecule localizes that isotope to the physiology we want to image. Sometimes isotopes don't need a separate biologically active molecule as it will localize by itself, such as iodine, which will go to the thyroid. Nuclear medicine comes in two distinct flavors, so-called general nukes and PET. At the end of the day, though, they both emit gamma photons, but get to that outcome in different ways. For general nukes radiopharmaceuticals, the radioisotope emits gamma rays directly. General nukes can also be called single photon emission imaging because the isotope emits one photon. Remember, gamma rays are just high energy photons. X-rays are also photons, but at a lower energy than a gamma ray. For PET, which stands for positron emission tomography, it is a little bit more complicated. The isotope emits a positron or a beta positive particle, which is a positively charged version of an electron, and antimatter version of an electron. When in the body, it will interact with an electron and annihilate, emitting two gamma photons 180 degrees away from each other. This 180 degree is extremely important because it allows for a much greater spatial resolution. Notice that it uses two photons, whereas general nukes uses a single photon. For each radiopharmaceutical, you need to memorize a few facts. For the radioisotope portion, you need to know the photon energy emits and the physical half-life. For the biologically active molecule portion, you need to know what is the physio physiologic analog, where does it go normally, and how does it get excreted. Learn these over time as you go through the rotation. For each imaging study you read, look up these key facts for each radiopharmaceutical, and you'll slowly be able to memorize them. Now that we know that both general nukes and PET use gamma rays, it's important to know the basics of the detector. Gamma rays first go through a collimator to filter out any stray gamma rays. They then hit a scintillation crystal, which converts the gamma photon into fluorescent light. This is an important definition you will hear many times. Scintillation is a process of converting a gamma photon to fluorescent light photon, which is lower energy. It then goes through a photomultiplier tube, which converts the light into an electric signal which the computer can process. Now that we know how detectors work, we can start to understand how to make an image to visualize physiology. In general nukes, which is single photon, remember, the most common way to get physiologic information is to use a gamma camera. This is a 2D array of detectors. After we give the radiopharmaceutical and turn the patient into a light bulb, we put the detector in front of the patient and capture a two-dimensional planar image. Just like a light bulb, photons are emitted all around the patient, but we only image the photons going forward. It is sort of analogous to a radiograph, but instead of anatomy, we see physiology. This is a, an example of a bone scan, which uses technetium 99M MDP. MDP is a phosphate analog, which will go to areas of bone turnover. SPECT stands for Single Photon Emission Computed Tomography. What CT is to radiograph, SPECT is to a planar nukes image. Instead of a single two-dimensional projection, the gamma camera takes an image, rotates about 3 degrees or so, takes another image, and continues to do that for the entire 360 degrees around the patient. Then we have planar data all around the body. A reconstruction algorithm turns these multi-projection data into an axial and three-dimensional data set. 
We can also overlay this to a conventional CT and co-edit the images so we have physiology on top of anatomy, which is a SPECT CT. Finally, PET is a different technology altogether. Because the positron annihilates and gives off two gamma photons at 180 degrees from each other, each gamma photon will hit a detector 180 degrees apart. Based on the differences in timing, the computer can determine where along the line the photon originated. The sum of these images will make a three-dimensional data set. Initially, we get an NAC image, or a non-attenuation corrected image. Notice that the skin surface is bright and the center of the image is dark. That is because photons that originate deeper in the body will be absorbed and not get to the detector, or attenuated, more than photons that originate superficially. We combine this non-attenuation corrected data with a conventional anatomic CT to correct for this error, and we get an attenuation corrected PET image. This data can then be fused with the anatomical data from the CT to get a PET CT. Remember, PET images image physiology and the CT image images anatomy primarily. Put together, they are a powerful tool. Let's take a look to see what these machines actually look like. This is a gamma camera. Within the paddles are the many detectors. For planar images, the detector will remain stationary and detect photons from the patient. Behind the gamma camera is a CT scanner, which is used for the SPECT CT. For a SPECT, the gamma cameras will acquire an image, rotate, acquire another image, etc. The patient will also go through the conventional CT, which is again behind the gamma cameras. Unlike a traditional CT, which takes 30 seconds or so, a SPECT takes longer because it has to acquire multiple planar images. A SPECT for a bone scan, for example, will take approximately 18 minutes. This is a PET scanner, which contains both detector and the conventional CT in one housing. Detectors are circumferentially around the patient, seen here. A PET takes about 15 to 30 minutes, and the CT portion takes about 30 seconds or so. Here is a chart of commonly used nuclear medicine radiopharmaceuticals and the physiologic analogs. Keeping with the color coding, the isotopes are in blue and the biologically active molecules are in yellow. Some of the isotopes act like biologically active molecules themselves, so they are underlined in yellow. Although there are many more facts you need to know about each of these, knowing the physiologic analog is the first and most important step to start interpreting images, so that's what I've listed here. PET is more straightforward because there are only three radiopharmaceuticals. I've listed the radiopharmaceutical with the isotope and biologically active molecule in the same color scheme and showed a whole body normal distribution for each. Keep in mind, PET is a modality. For each PET, you need to say what type of PET. Is it an FTG PET, a dotatate PET, or a fucyclovine PET? Here are some key numbers for each isotope. There's no need to memorize these prior to the service, but keep looking at them throughout your rotations and they will eventually stick in. Finally, here are some key definitions we've covered uh, mostly through this lecture. You should be able to define these by now. Thank you so much. Here's a link to the presentation and my reference.